What's good? What's good? I'm back. Yours truly, one and only Paul Pigger, host of the Paul Pigger Podcast, aka Triple P, aka the Commerce's Podcast. Your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. Um, today I'm gonna react to a clip from the interview with Method Man and Math Hoffa on the Expert Opinion Podcast, which is probably the best hip hop podcast on the planet, in my opinion. And um, before we do that, I want to give you a word from Dizzle. We got the new Dizzle brand um, shirt right here, the white with the blue, because, you know, we got the new Dizzle brand blue label. So this is like the Dodger colors. Definitely love this shirt. Not a dollar Dodgers fan, but I definitely love it. Have to go get me a Dodgers hat now to match it and whatnot. But um, shout out to Chris Roker, Olivia Harris, and the creator of Dizzle. Mike Dizzle. Let's get into a Dizzle brand premium luxury liqueur advertisement here. Here we go. That's that. That's it. Is that one? Let's go. Everybody talking about like that's that turn. That lid. That slap. Everybody talking about Dizzle new song. I got GS jumping on a Tuesday. Dizzle drunk gang deeper than the Wu Tang. If you love it, then you better cut your back. That's right, Dizzle. Check them out, DizzleBrand.com. Dizzle is a premium luxury liqueur mixed with agave tequila, cognac, and orange liquor mango mix. Just throw your Dizzle on ice, and it's nice. If you want to order your very own bottle or bottles, go to DizzleBrand.com. Click on the front page where it says order online, or you can go to our locations and click on one of the top three website links. I recommend Emilio's Beverage. You must be 21 and over. Shipping and handling is included. Below that is actual store locations in California, Oklahoma, Kansas, and the number one selling state for Dizzle, Arkansas, and the Dizzle brand merch as well, the T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, hats, and more. Go to DizzleBrand.com, click on Merchandise Store, and also you can go to Etsy.com, that's E-T-S-Y.com, excuse me, had a burp there. Drinking this sun kiss, and no, I'm not drinking Dizzle right now, not this early in the morning. But, um, yeah, check them out dizzlebrand.com for the merchandise, etsy.com for the merchandise. Search for Dizzle Brand, and the Dizzle Brand gummies as well are now available at dizzlenova.com. And I repeat, di- the Dizzle Brand gummies now available at dizzlenova.com. Link will be in the description. Definitely got to go get me a Dodgers hat to match this Dizzle shirt later today if I can. And right, let's get into it. Um, Method Man talking about um, the title is Melly Mel has shit on rappers after him. Uh, old rappers, haters, and why? Let's get into it. Infamous? Uh-huh. Uh. Saying why aren't in every other genre of music their older artists are revered? Mm-hmm. We talked. We talked about will, this. Y'all talked about this. Yeah. 
Let's how they they wheel them out on stage in a fucking on their deathbed, <laughs> yeah. and the crowd will still give it up. Talk about this all the time. I've talked about this with many people in the Ville. You know, there's definitely a disconnect, and they're about to try to get into it. Up and all Word. that shit, and he mm -hmm. said, uh, with IV in their arm, everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wild doesn't hip hop. Because it's not OG. profitable. Go ahead. Can I? Can I? Can I? Let's, can let's I hear this. It's gonna be interesting. This. I'm gonna jump in right now. I want to. I, I want to double down on that and be okay. like, "There's a hip hop hall of fame, but why doesn't? Why doesn't it? Why don't your doesn't your status matter until you are inducted to the rock, rock and, and roll, roll hall of fame?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I did not know that. All mm -hmm. right. As far as the, um, that's an interesting one. You know, um, I guess being a hip hop star is not on the same level as being a rock star or a pop star, you know, um, that is an interesting one. That is an interesting one. Why is it till you get, you get in the hip hop hall of fame and not until you get inducted to the rock and roll hall of fame? Are you really revered as that rock status? I guess, you know, rock stars, I, I just remember like a time when people considered rock stars gods. They were looked at like gods. So I've never revered hip hop artists as gods. As much as I love hip hop music, I never revered them as gods. But rock stars, for some reason, were revered as gods. Why aren't uh, the older artists revered? revered. Mm -hmm. I think that's a matter of opinion. It's a matter of opinion because there's a lot of people, especially shout out to everybody that subscribed. Shout out to um, all, all. Before he finishes, I can agree with that. That I mean, there is some people that do revere old schoolers super heavy. I mean, I got... I know people like not saying no names, but no old schooler can do any wrong to them. You know, no, like they could do no wrong to them, you know? And it's like, okay, everybody, like nobody's right all the time. You know, somebody's gotta be, everybody's gotta be wrong sometime. All the people watching right now, a lot of these guys like, the demographic of this show is like 24 to 55 nice. leveled. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's nice. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So the 24-year-olds, they're watching, okay. and they're seeing people like like yourself, and they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know that went down. I didn't know that went down. Oh, that nigga pocket check. <laughs> 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 right. They, don't, they probably weren't saying that. Facts. Look. And then there's the other guys that's, that's still watching. I think... It's more of hip hop is young. Mm. There you go. We young. haven't gotten to the point where hip hop just hit 50 years old. I'm 44. I was six years old when hip hop, you know, or six hip hop was six years old, six years old when I was born, you know, which was. 1979, April 9th, 1979. Um, six something PM time, I think, and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, man, hip hop is only six years older than me. The whole genre. Uh, uh, Jay Z hasn't spit in a verse at 60 yet. You dig what I'm saying? Like No, there ain't enough Jay-Z spitting verses at 60. Right. See, I, I like where nope. you went there and shit. For me, it's it's they don't know, like, it's it's hard. I gotta stop again. I always be like asking myself, like, what's the excuse that old school artists can give me nowadays that are not recording at least a new single every three or four months or dropping a EP once a year, you know, like what's the excuse? There's no excuse you could give me when DLC who loses his voice drops a whole album and 
it didn't sound that great. It didn't sound that great because of his voice, but no excuses, man. It was no excuses, you know. Um, what excuse did these old schoolers got where well, they're not constantly still making music? They're not making new music to stay more relevant. They just shut it down. They stopped making music, and they want to be revered. I mean, what did he just say? He said, we haven't heard Jay-Z yet hitting a rhyme, spitting a rhyme at 60. Eminem rhyming at 60. We haven't heard that yet. You know, um, Karis won at 60. Rakim at 60. You know, a lot of these cats, they've shut it down already. You're not going to hear them spitting rhymes at 60 no more. And a lot of them ain't sounding good at 60 either because they stopped rhyming. They just completely stopped um, recording new music. They're just touring all their old stuff over and over and over and over and over again. And after a while, you can only take but so much of, you know, the same music over and over and over and over again when there's 100,000 songs being uploaded every single day. Heard. I'll give you an example, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying this is me, but mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure this has happened. There have been episodes where I've, or where uh, you can be an artist at a label, an up and coming label or a label that's already popping or whatever and shit. Right. But you create a lane at this label now that blows up. They make millions, you make millions, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Five, six years from that, y'all part ways. Right. A new guy comes in. Right. Right? Now, when you got your deal, let's say it was for six figures, this guy comes in and gets seven to eight figures. Right? right. But remember, the path you laid, that new path, right. opened up a whole new lane of money for this label. Right. Mm -hmm. Which opened up a new lane for artists on this wave to pass through. Mm -hmm. Now, six years have passed, you're not on the label anymore, this new guy gets signed. Two more years after that, you run, the guy blowing up, he blows up. You run into them, right? And they don't even acknowledge you. Kind of thing. Has that happened to you? No, it hasn't happened to me. But I'm pretty sure this has happened. And it's not well, a conscious, it's not right. a conscious thing. Well, as far man, as the newer artist my, goes. I think Mecca will, he stated many times okay. that this, it's, it's been preached to these new artists that the old heads are haters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get that. You and know you know, I mean? it's warranted though. I, like mm. I said before, it's warranted because when these when this new wave of music was coming through and it was these these cadences weren't what we were used to. Right. And we're coming off of Eminem High, we're coming off Jay making some of the best fucking music he had ever made in his whole fucking career. Right. And it was lyricism. Then the battle rap shit was bop bop bop. Bop bop. Right. And then you coming in and these dudes is it's a vibe now. I didn't understand it at first when my kids was trying to put me on to the shit, mm -hmm. but I understand it now. And it's like, I think about this. And when I was younger, yeah, we had Big Daddy Kane and all them niggas, but you know which party was rocking the most? The ones that was playing the reggae, the dance hall, right. the rockers. Right. That's what we used to call it and shit. And, that, and it got to the point where I didn't want to hear hip hop in the club. You and these kids are in the club. So for them, it's like, if you're not doing this, we don't want to hear that shit. And on top of that, you motherfuckers are saying, we not hip hop. Mm -hmm. We came from y'all. Now, if it was respect on both sides, because there have been artists that came. I'm guilty of that, man. I'm so guilty of that. I like, I say a lot of stuff ain't hip hop, like this trap rap and sad rap and whatever it is. Um. To me, it's more subgenres of rap music because that's the thing. It's like you got hip hop slash rap. You know, like I think, like, you know, rap is the most common element all throughout the hip hop. But when you're getting like breaking, graffiti, DJing, MCing, and things of that nature, all those elements are gone. Now, I get what he's saying. Like it's they're more into music that's just gonna make you dance because they're in the clubs, you know. And to me, I just seem to me it seems like 
you know, when they say things come back around, I, I just feel like it's got to the point where it's gotten basic again, like the 80s. I almost feel like we're back in the 80s again. It's just so much more basic. All the music is about just dancing when it was about MCing, breaking, graffiti. It wasn't about just MCing. It was about MCing and breaking. So it was about rapping and dancing. And I think we're just back at that full circle again, you know, but the sound is just trap, 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 trap. So people, they don't like it. They won't support it. They hate it. But um, just because you, just because you dislike an artist doesn't mean there isn't something you could find about them that you do respect. And that's how I'm with NBA Youngboy. I, I don't like none of his music. But he, when I reach, as, as far as artists that get respect, NBA Youngboy is like damn near at the top of the list right now for artists that get my respect, even though I don't like his music. And, but these old schoolers, they, we, we, and I've been guilty of this. They're just, you know, we shit talk their music, we call it trash, we call it garbage, and we expect them to just revere the people that came before them, the people that paved the way. I mean, you can't shit talk somebody and expect them to revere you afterwards. In the beginning, Melly Mel, people that it, but Melly Mel in particular, Melly Mel has shit on hip hop after him. Like he shit on a lot of people mm -hmm. that came after him. And there are a lot of people like myself who are fans, who have been fans, who are still fans of Melly Mel. And to this day, when I see Melly Mel, I speak to him, but Melly Mel was rotten. Yeah. You know, there was a there was an episode where he just passed me by and my hand was out and all that shit. And I don't And it's cause Melly Mel feels entitled to something you know every every person that starts something that invents something typically feels entitled to something but they don't understand evolution they don't understand everything has to evolve everything has to start start from scratch started from the bottom now i'm here <laughs> you know everything's gotta like you know the nba at first it, you know what they're explaining is kind of how the NBA work. You know, um, you need a cast like Dr. J to come in and take, you know, take the NBA to another realm. Then you need a Magic and Bird. Then you need a Jordan to just grab the baton and just take it to a whole nother heights. And Jordan was never the highest paid player in the league until his, like, last two years, you know. And now these guys are making like you got Jalen Brown making sixty something million a year, and ain't nowhere near as great as a Michael Jordan who only made twenty five million a year. I think his last two seasons, you know. That's the thing. Everything has to grow, build revenue, um, get bigger. When Melly Mel came out, there wasn't a lot of money in hip hop yet. White fan base wasn't super heavy yet. It probably didn't come in until they did um, Aerosmith and Run DMC, you know. Now, like, you go to these hip-hop shows, especially these pure hip-hop shows, like a Wu-Tang or a Nas, man, there's more white fan base than anything, you know. Like, so many white people love hip-hop now. It's just ridiculous. Asians, Hispanics, Blacks, I mean, all across the globe. Germans, I mean, they freaking love hip-hop, you know. So, yeah, all this stuff had to grow. And now these cats are making more money than ever. They're capitalizing more than ever because, you know, I mean, people didn't see all the mistakes that people could possibly make in the music industry and learn from them. You know, by now, it's just these new cat and these new cats coming into business. They're learning the business a lot quicker and a lot faster because the business has changed. It ain't about street teams and radio. When you work records, it's about the internet. If they learn the internet, they can learn this business a lot quicker.
I don't know if it was consciously done or if it was just done on some malice shit. Right. Either way, it was like I, I watch interviews and, and things of that and Mel talk real fucking reckless and it's like, yo, Mel, there are people, some of these people that you talking about fucking love you, man. Don't right. do that. Yeah. Don't do that. If anything, show them. If you the best, show them. Show it. Period. I don't give a fuck if nobody listening. You out there fucking doing the shit. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And when it gets to those those blocks right there and then they have day crews and, you know, certain people that work at labels that's big in them up. And but but those blocks for them are necessary because the OGs have probably put them on to business things that's that they exactly should be doing. Why. That's not happening. But the, but I, I get that. I understand that part. All right. But that's not what we're talking about. Here. It, it, uh, prob problem with that is is these new cats they can break themselves a lot better than old school cats could. They can break themselves better nowadays. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram influencers, Facebook, Twitter. There's just so many platforms now. You know, back then it was just street teams and radio. And radio, we know that's program directors. You know, everybody's not just getting massive radio spins unless there's payola or unless you're on a specific label that you know, could get specific favors. Yeah, we're talking about the younger generation reaching back to the older generation saying, let's just do a record together. And the Bridge people the who are in the, in the middle right here, like, nah. There's a reason for that. And it's not even just that, though. After the old generation and shit taught them for so fucking long, long enough, you should talk them for over a year. That's too much. But they've been shit talking for years. The music's trash. Y'all ain't saying nothing. This mumble rap bullshit. Da 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 da. You know, um, I've done songs. I've done a song with an old schooler where they, you know, said they basically was trashing new school artists on the song, calling it all the shit I called it. Um, I've dealt with a lot of old schools and, and I know the terminologies they use. You know, they hate this music. But you can't constantly tell people to their face you hate them and expect them to revere you and adore, adore you and look up to you and respect you and reach out to you. It, it's such a delusional um, ask right now, man. Whether whether it was intentional or not, man, the shit talking, you know, this is how I look at it. It's like when Democrats got out, a lot of Democrats got out and called every person who voted for Trump a white racist supremacist, a white supremacy racist. You can't walk that back now. You done. It's out there. And people don't heard that. And now when you try to come and talk to them, they're going to tell you to go fuck yourself. You know, they don't want to hear what you got to say. There's not going to be any kind of respect after that, especially when you never even met these, you know, like these old schoolers haven't even met some of these rappers personally to go ahead and just shit talk and trash their music publicly, you know. But I think J. Cole is a cat that tries to bridge the gap with the 21 Savages and things like that nature. But the, the bridge has been burnt by, at this point. That's intentional. Or, That's not mm, by mistake. I, I, That's I mean, intentional. Honestly, like just, just. Why would Floyd Mayweather fight somebody that's had ten fights? It wouldn't. Wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense for Floyd to do that shit. Or a fighter that's coming up in the ranks. People like him, but he not. He hasn't proven himself. There's a difference between fighting him and sparring with him to make him better. I can spar with you on a single and make you better. I can sit in on your studio session and make you better. Fighting you is me dropping my album the same day as yours and wiping you off the map. That's crazy. That's a fight. This is the problem I have when people say things like this. Sitting in the studio and I can make you better. 
you know, it just makes me think of when people like talk about, you know, prisoner reform, not police reform or prison reform, but reforming the actual prisoners. Does the prisoner want to be reformed? Does the artist want you to make them better? Do they care about being better? Do they care about spitting bars? Do they care about rapping over certain sounds? You know, it's like we want to force some shit that can't be forced. It has to be organic. That nobody's that nobody's asking for a fight. What I don't think, what I don't, what I think a lot of people don't see is I think the the idea is of the separation, people think that that's by mistake or that just kind of happened. I look at it as way more insidious. I think it's absolutely intentional because if the young artist absolutely intentional, gets yeah. next to you and you get to sit there and tell him all the shit you went through with Def Jam and get to tell him all the ways your contract might have been fucked up and all the ins and outs of the publishing world and you start telling that dude who's generating somewhere in the in between six to eight million dollars every couple of months for this label, you start telling him what he's worth, he's gonna turn around and look at the labels and say, wait a minute, you motherfuckers is playing me this whole fucking time. But you're not doing it. I totally disagree with that premise. Just because of the SDG interview, the way he walked out. These motherfuckers don't care about nothing but the money no more. They're like the modern day NBA players. They don't really love making music. They don't really care about hip hop or love hip hop. They just all of, they just love the fame and the money. That's it, man. They're like the modern day NBA players, man. I, I just think that's a like if I you know if cats from my era see Method Man, yeah. But this do like they're not all just like oh my gosh it's a man you know i wonder what's in things of that nature you know no they it's it's just like when dude was trying to ask them questions you know you could just tell like oh, i don't give a shit about this bullshit ass question that has substance i don't care about this this question of content you know like if it ain't about you know some of the you know, simple-minded, ignorant bullshit that I rap about. I don't really care about it. And, and he literally walked out in the middle of the middle of the question. Didn't say nothing because these people they they think that shit's beneath them. You know these interviews. It's like like um Machine Gun Kelly when he don't like doing interviews. I just want you to like my music. No, they it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. They just want you to buy the product and that's it. So they can just make a shit ton of money. They want you to like it just cause, just cause they say so. That in one studio session, this is what I'm but, saying. But and, keeping and you away keeps the friendship. I understand from that. Happening. I understand that if you develop a friendship, because honestly, risk it a if... lot of a lot of the newer artists, I mean, not even newer artists. There's there's people I've done records with, mm -hmm. right? And now you don't even have to be in the studio with a motherfucker and shit. Mm -hmm. But I respect them enough that I'm gonna jump on their shit with them and shit. And you take. You take them. I forgot my point. That's trees. Labels, shit. blocks. Mm -hmm. I do that all the time. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, what big thing was is he says if you build a friendship, and that's the thing. They, these guys don't have no intentions of really building friendships with old school rappers, and old school rappers, a lot of them don't really have intentions of building related friendships with these new school rappers. You know, they just want to shit talk their music. Labels in block. The block in between the young mm -hmm. dudes and the older generation. Nah, that wasn't the point I was going to make. Fuck. I hate when I do that shit. That's what 51 is like, kids. Stop. I did that shit in the bomb shelter interview. I had a question on my mind I was going to ask and We was talking and I totally forgot his shit. And I had to come up with it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, I, I get that. People, or there's there's a way to think that, you know, not conspiracy, intentional, absolutely. But it's, it discourages, it discourages from, there could be some incredible fucking music made if some of these newer cats would step outside their comfort zones and fuck with some of the music maybe that 
their grandparents fuck. And what is he saying right there? Think about what he just said. There can be some incredible music. He's saying it himself, man. The music in nowadays, it's not great, man. It's not good. It's not even really okay, man. It's so basic. It's so subpar. It's so easy to do. It, it's so repetitive. It doesn't stand. None of these artists stand out. None of them really stand out. Kendrick, Cole, Drake, that's it. You know, some underground cats. But when you get to the mainstream, none of them stand out or uh, stand apart from each other because they all rap over the same sounding beats all the time. At least in the 90s, if cats use the same drum tracks, the sounds around the drum tracks would be different. Like Wu Tang would be different than Mob Deep, you know, and MOP and like everybody's sound was different, you know, and dudes are coming with their own sounds and creating their own sounds, you know, and they didn't use all the same drum tracks all the time. They didn't use it, you know, like this stuff is just so basic, man. I swear every beat sounds like you got that. Like what the with like we mm -hmm. did because uh, because honestly we, but, we, but we here it is music. they do they do I, I hear it now i heard that lotto joint i yeah. heard the joint with uh megan the stallion right mm -hmm. that's uh the joint. all throwback yeah. joints a bunch it's of throwback a lot of that and the drill music is definitely doing yeah that because they, they they remake yeah you, you answered your question thing. with the one word you said it would be incredible music to be made if i'm the label my interest isn't making music it's making money Absolutely. I get to keep the money doing it the way that I'm. That's the problem. Right there. Like, you got two kind of artists still in this world. You got ones that really love the music. The They just love to make music. It, it's, it's a passionate thing for them. And they want to be successful at it if they can. But then you got the people just in it for the money, man in it for the fame, you know, and, um, yeah, there are people sampling a lot of more old school and stuff now and whatnot. Definitely is. But he hit on the money. Like labels are just want to make money. You know, they don't really, they're not artists. Unless you're an artist running a label, then you might, but most of these people like, Jimmy Iovine, for example. Jimmy Iovine was never an artist. He was just a guy that records music. Recording music and making music are two different things. Anybody can record music and get paid for it and not like the music that they're recording. I would argue studios nowadays probably don't like none of the music they're recording nowadays. They just... Studios just want to get paid for the recordings. Studios are like record labels. They could care less what your song sounds like, if it's going to become a hit or whatever. They just want their $80 to $100 an hour, especially since the quality is not that great anyways nowadays. Nobody's making a lot of incredible music. See, that's the key word. A method man use incredible. There's not a lot of incredible music being made nowadays. That's why I gotta go back and listen to things like Robin Thick Magic, you know, like incredible music. Like the closest thing to incredible music recently was Soul Sonic, Bruno Mars, and Anderson Pop, you know. Or I might go to listen to some John Newman, you know, some incredible sounding music, some Oliver Anthony, just something that just sounds incredible. You know, you could just hear the passion in a voice, you know. And if you really want to hear really incredible music nowadays, you got to go to singers. You got, you can't go to rappers nowadays. You got to go to singers. I'm doing it. I get a new dude who I can bring in, cash out, burn him out, get him out of here, replace him because he's that easy to replace. Finding another method man going to be hard as fuck. Another Once you pass man? in the music, you have nothing to barter with until your audience comes. 
Say it again. Once you pass it in the music, you have nothing to barter with until your audience comes. So if, mm -hmm. if I and that's the problem with a lot of old schoolers. And why is that they're not continuously making music? You sh you could be a you should be able to make music to the day you die. You don't. That's the thing. People can invest into a home studio, um, like, and if you gotta only record once, if you're gonna only record one single every three months, I mean, if you can't record one studio session every three or four months as an old school rapper, I mean, shit, are you even working a fucking nine to five? <laughs> are you even getting any tour dates? You know, um, yeah, there's a total disconnect. Ed Lover said he blames the old schoolers, and I do too. I do too. They got to throw out an olive branch at this point. Um, you can't just shit talk motherfuckers out the gate and expect them to show, to, to cling on to words like respect, revere, adore, um, look up to, admire. You can't expect the people to Cling on to words like that when you've just been shit talking them since they've came into the business. And, and rappers have always been a competition. It's always been a thing of shit talking rappers that you feel you're better than. And Melly Mel ain't better than a lot of rappers. So he need to shut up and sit the fuck down. And he all he does is make matters worse because all they're going to be like another fucking old head talking shit over and over and over and over again. And I think the bridge is just completely burnt. But Method Man sounds like a cat that is willing to sit down and have civil discourse. He sounds very conservative in his, you know, speaking there. Like, he, he would like to see the new school and the old school come together. Like, he don't want to just shit talk the artists and call their music trash. He just wants to help them um, to make incredible music to make better music without you know putting them down and, and shit talking them and things of that nature but this is always an interesting conversation and debate is the disconnect in hip-hop you know even like basketball players even though the old school basketball players call a lot of these cats soft nowadays um there's cats like Kobe would call all these cats soft nowadays, and a lot of these cats still look up to Kobe. So once again, I'll thank y'all for tuning in, Paul Pickett Podcast, and I'm out.